Hello, everyone. Let's dive right in. My name is Joe Bender. I am a month into my journey at Blockstack as a developer evangelist. Um, right now, my focus is on empowering the community to build crazy blockchain tools and powerful applications. Um, I'd say my favorite quarantine activity has been browsing Bitcoin happening memes. If you're into the blockchain space, you know that the Bitcoin mining reward just halved and it came with an onslaught of funny memes and videos and uh, great conversation. Oh no, you can see my toolbar down here. I wanna automatically hide the taskbar. There we go. There we go. During this talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Blockstack, the Stacks 2.0 blockchain, the Clarity programming language, and the hackathon, which is why we're here, um, that is going on right now. Blockstack, if you haven't heard of us before, we're an open source effort to develop software that provides an alternative to the traditional centralized architecture of the internet that's kind of uh, established with walled gardens of Facebook and, and big banking and um, all these corporations harvest your information and then monetize it to advertisers and they get paid for that instead of you. Um, we think that users should be fairly compensated for their participation in a network. Um, so we developed a full stack decentralized computing network that enables this new generation of applications where devs and users interact fairly, securely, and privately. Um, Blockstack uses blockchain technology to accomplish this, and we build protocols, developer tools um, that return digital rights back to the user. Um, blockchain has been a pretty big buzzword the last few years. I think a lot of companies either built a blockchain or picked a blockchain and then we're like, look, we have a blockchain, what do we do with it? Um, we kind of created the goal of a user controlled internet and then realized that blockchain was a tool or a solution to accomplish that instead of just blindly picking a blockchain, throwing a dart at it. So Stacks 2.0 is um, our big focus this year. Uh, the Stacks 1.0 blockchain has been live for a little while and now we're gravitating towards Stacks 2.0. The testnet is live right now. It went live around two or three weeks ago, I believe. Um, so our thesis is that Web3 is gonna introduce true internet ownership and it's gonna be anchored to the most secure blockchain, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a household name. It's kind of king of the cryptocurrency hill right now. Um, it has the security, it has the massive network effect. Um, and we really believe that Web3 will be anchored in it. And Stacks 2.0 kind of represents the blueprint by which um, Web3 can emerge and scale on Bitcoin. Uh, Stacks 2.0 is designed with security, scalability, and speed in mind. Um, Muneeb, our CEO, has been developing block stack for five, six years now, pre-Ethereum, the number two cryptocurrency, since around 2014, 2015. So he's done a lot of observing and taking notes. And then when we've developed Stacks 2.0, it's an improvement on a lot of obstacles or frustrations we see in the space. Um, it's got some really cool, unique mechanisms, some novel ideas. Stacks miners forward BTC actually to participate in mining and Stacks holders can earn Bitcoin by participating in the consensus mechanism. And we think it's exciting that people were, will earn a base currency like Bitcoin. Um, mainnet launched sometime this year. We're shooting for around summer, but we believe that um, software shouldn't be shipped until it is 100% ready and free of bugs and flawless. So we're heads down hard at work to bring it to you sometime in 2020. Um, three really cool concepts that are introduced with Stacks 2.0 is stacking. It's kind of the novel value transfer mechanism we've dreamed up. Um, and it allows Stacks holders to earn that Bitcoin for actively participating. Clarity is the smart contract language for um, using Stacks 2.0. It's what the hackathon is all about right now. Um, went live a couple weeks ago. We've seen some really awesome tinkering and uh, boilerplate smart contracts come out of the community. Um, and true proof of transfer um, acronym POX is a new mining mechanism we proposed um, for the stacking consensus algorithm. And it enables benefits not possible with proof of work or proof of stake. Proof of work is really electricity intensive. Proof of stake is locking up large amounts of the, uh, of the cryptocurrency with maybe some unintended consequences. So we're looking forward to seeing how proof of transfer works. 
smart contracts. This is a little 101 crash course in smart contracts. Um, if you're not super privy to the blockchain space yet, you might not know that smart contracts encode and enforce rules for modifying the set of data on the blockchain that's shared between the nodes. Um, entities don't necessarily need to trust each other. That's kind of the glory of the blockchain is um, selfish behavior is incentivized, but it also benefits the system. It's kind of solving the tragedy of the commons by people looking out for themselves. They're actually helping to uphold the security of the network. Um, smart contracts exist on the blockchain. Anyone can query them and you submit a transaction to the blockchain to kind of trigger them. Um, it can result in new transactions. A smart contract can new transaction and applications built on the blockchain kind of take advantage of smart contracts to manage the global state that is visible to the public. Um, blockchains have also been called a state machine because there is a state, um, Bob has 10, Alice has 20, there's a transaction, maybe Bob sends Alice five, and then the next state is Alice has 15, and Bob has five. Um, so a blockchain is literally just a chain of states, um, a current appraisal of the system. Uh, anyone can audit blockchains in order to independently verify that an app's global shared state is being managed correctly and according to all the smart contract rules. Blah, 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 blah. What does that enable? What does that even do? Use cases, um, access control, allowing you to log into an app or a website um, using self-sovereign identity. Non-fungible tokens you might have heard of um, uh, got pretty big on Ethereum a couple of years ago with crypto kitties or, or digital collectibles. There's also Gods Unchained, which is kind of a Hearthstone clone where instead of a centralized corporation owning all the assets and all the trading cards, digital trading cards, um, the users own them and it's in a decentralized network, kind of an interesting shift away. Um, also business model templates, you could uh, sign up for subscriptions on a blockchain where a smart contract is paying out a certain application once a month. Um, it also enables app specific blockchains. Um, we ran a really cool pilot on app.co where we had over a hundred Blockstack apps built on the Stacks 1.0 blockchain using Blockstack ID authentication to log in. And it also enables the fun blockchain buzzword of DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. These are decentralized companies that are run by smart contracts and by people funding it with a certain token or cryptocurrency. Smart contract crash course for you there. The clarity programming language, that's what we're really excited about now, hoping to give you some clarity with this presentation. Um, it's the programming language we developed um, for the Stacks 2.0 blockchain. It differs from a lot of other smart contract languages in that it's interpreted, so it's human readable and auditable. Anyone can look at it and kind of discern the functionality. Um, it's also decidable. You can determine precisely what code is going to be executed for any function. Um, and it gives that ability to write fully expressive smart contracts that anchor to Bitcoin. And this is huge. Um, smart contracts and dApps kind of took off on Ethereum because the Solidity programming language allowed for more expressive types of applications, um, which drew a lot of people to Ethereum. And I think adding and enabling this sort of functionality while also leveraging the security and network effect of Bitcoin is a huge innovation. We're really hoping to see apps built on Blockstack that come with the peace of mind of the Bitcoin champion blockchain. Um, Clarity uses a strong static type system. It's Lisp based. Lisp has a long history. A lot of developers are familiar with it, which is why we chose to base it off of it. It's a fully parentheticized prefix notation, um, kind of a classic uh, um, coding architecture that people will feel comfortable with. Um, Clarity smart contracts are composed of two parts, a data space and a set of functions. Um, the set of functions is the code that is executing and the data space is the little storage on the blockchain that belongs to that smart contract that allows it to store variables or data. Um, users call smart contracts uh, public functions by broadcasting a transaction to the blockchain that invokes that function. Um, and function arguments in database schemas require specific types and use of types is ch checked when you launch that smart contract. Joe, if I, if I may interrupt you just for a second, because I've, I've Please seen do. 
two questions if you want you can take them now because they may be quite important um yeah absolutely i would appreciate you throwing any there's, there's uh, qu one, questions from youtube one. my way exactly there's actually one on youtube that is uh quite simple to answer I, I i'm nearly answering it on my own but i thought maybe it's good if you do that and it's called what are smart contract languages if they are not interpreted what are smart contract languages if they are not interpreted? I'm tempted to have you try to answer that. Um, but I, th I think uh, Solidity is compiled before it goes to the blockchain. So it gets uh, transcribed into a completely non-human readable set of um, hexadecimal characters and uh, and it's just a long strip string of gibberish, I think maybe JSON that's compiled um, pre-blockchain. So then the um, on Ethereum, the Ethereum virtual machine can understand what it's saying. It's kind of an extra step in deploying contracts to the blockchain. So by having the smart contract language be interpreted and then the Stacks 2.0 blockchain able to read that type of human readable syntax and uh, and language, um, it takes an obfuscation step out of development. Uh, I think maybe that answers uh, your question correctly. Exactly, it. actually you, in Solidity you compile that to binary and the binary is represented as a string on uh, the transaction or yeah, as, as, well, as a string in the state of the uh, finally deployed smart contract. So uh, clarity is really different in, in that the, the real source code is visible, right? So you can read the source code on the state of the blockchain, which is uh, quite amazing. Yep, exactly. And and thanks for helping to clarify there. It's been a while since I uh, dusted off the solidity chops there. <laughs> Uh, we're doing solidity all day on Tobina. This is why we're quite familiar. But there's another uh, one from, from Lars here in the chat. Uh, this, this is rather simple. Clarity is only available for Bitcoin blockchains, right? Um, yes, Clarity is only available for the Stacks 2.0 blockchain. Um, the Stacks 2.0 blockchain is leveraging Bitcoin in a couple ways using proof of transfer or proof of burn. Um, we found ways to anchor to Bitcoin and, and use its security and use it in the consensus mechanism. But Clarity is solely interacting with the Stacks 2.0 blockchain. It's it's the, the language that the smart contracts that exist on the Stacks 2.0 blockchain use. Now, some of those smart contracts are interacting with the Bitcoin blockchain or... Um, or uh, the consensus mechanism or mining on the Stacks 2.0 blockchain, but you're never um, directly interacting with Bitcoin, like sending a Bitcoin transaction using a Clarity smart contract. Cool. Sorry to interrupt that. No, it's your turn. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, I, I don't have YouTube up, so I appreciate you uh, shooting. No, 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 no this is why, why I'm shorting in. Uh, if, if you don't like that, you just have to tell me, then I will stop that. But sometimes it's helpful, right? Because these questions are quite natural, I'd say. Yeah, um, absolutely. I want them to remain in the relevant part of the presentation. Absolutely. Let's go. Um, so only the associated smart contract can access that data space in the blockchain. So if that smart contract saves a certain variable or certain value in that data space, another smart contract cannot go directly into that data space and pull that variable. Um, oh, we finished this slide. So some differences to other languages and um, and these were some security vulnerabilities that happened in the last few years, some, some big CoinDesk headlines um, that you might've seen. Uh, the zero X decentralized exchange going down and the DAO hack on Ethereum, the original DAO hack, um, or no, the first one was an assembly and compilation error. Uh, and the next two, the DAO hack and the multi-sig hack were re-entrancy bugs that would be impossible with the Clarity smart contract language. Um, a bunch of transactions aborting. I've had some tr trouble getting transactions to clear on Ethereum sometimes because of the gas issue and gas limits and how much gas you're applying to your transaction. Um, that can be a little hard to understand for new users, just uh, beginners coming in from the mainstream. Uh, so we eliminated the, the out of gas problem by making Clarity non-touring complete. Um, 
Also, auditing is much simpler with Clarity. Uh, the auditing business in Solidity and Ethereum is, is huge. There's so many auditing firms out there. Um, Consensus Diligence or Open Zeppelin. Uh, there's, uh, it's a huge business because smart contract vulnerabilities are still kind of unknown and attack vectors are obfuscated and, and yet to be discovered. So um, we think auditing on Clarity is gonna be much easier with the human readable, decidable language. Key rules and limitations. Oh, I'm off the slide there a bit. Uh, the only primitive types in Clarity are booleans, integers, buffers, and principles. Um, principles are what we call both standard and contract addresses. It can be a little hard to grasp at first, but assets in Clarity and on the blockchain are owned by objects of the principal type, um, meaning that any object of the principal type can own an asset. Uh, recursion is also illegal and there are no anonymous functions. Looping may only be performed uh, via map, filter, or fold. Uh, and there's, there is support for lists. However, the only variable list length in the language appears function inputs. Um, and there's no support for append or join. Um, I encourage, if you're really getting your hands dirty, to pop into the Discord. A lot of people have been working on uh, workarounds or um, just ways to implement some of these mechanisms in Clarity with, uh, with different avenues. Also, variables are immutable in Clarity. Um, I'll tear through all this pretty quick. It's a little dense. Just an example Clarity smart contract here. As you can see, it's 14 lines of code. Not complicated at all. This is um, a tutorial that is live on the BlockSack website if you'd like to tinker around. But you can see an integer is defined at uh, the first line with defined data variable, initializes a new counter variable set to zero. It's stored in that data space owned by the smart contract. Um, then we define a public uh, function there that gives access to the counter variable from outside the current smart contract. So you can call the smart contract and get the variable. Like I said, you can't go straight into the data space. You have to call the smart contract to access the variable for you. You. Um, and that is done with the var get statement. A um, little further down, the begin statement evaluates the multi line expression beneath it. Um, as you can see, this is just a counter application that has a, uh, an increment function that's adding one and a decrement function subtracting one. I know this is rocket science. Um, in this case, uh, these functions are used to set the new value and return the new value. Um, we like test-driven development at Blockstack, and this tutorial had four little tests. Um, one checking that it's a valid contract with valid syntax and it's been deployed. And then does the counter variable start at zero? Can it increment? Can it decrement? Um, for the first test, you can see on line eight in the counter.clare um, contract that uh, this is in the testing this is in the testing file in the project directory. Um, this shows where to find the counter.clarity contract on line eight. Um, it specifies the address of the contract there. Um, and this kind of just creates a transaction query that tests that the syntax of the contract is valid and it will pass the first test because of this. Next three tests are, are much easier and, and functional and uh, can wrap your head around it more easily. Um, the first one should start at zero. It uh, creates a counter, gets the counter variable, and then asserts is it equal to zero. It will pass the first test. Then this next test tests that increment uh, method or function. Um, it executes the increment function, which means it should go up by one. So then it asserts and checks that it's up uh, equal to one. Then it calls it again just for fun and then checks if it's equal to two. Once it increments up to two, then we're on to the next test of the decrement method. Um, we subtract one, we call that decrement method, then we assert equal await get counter. Is it equal to one? Yes, it is, which means we decrement again, back down to zero. Is it equal to zero? Yes, it is. Boom, we've passed all of our tests. So that might have been a little intense for you, but it just demonstrates a simple testing suite, simple contract, um, not many lines of code, and you could potentially read through this, not a master coder, and kind of understand what all these tests are doing. 
So I'm going to dive into the Clarity Hackathon now a little bit. Uh, there are two phases. It runs from May 14th to June 30th, but it's broken up into two phases. First phase right now is all focused on smart contracts, like what I just showed you. And it runs from May 14th to May 29th. Um, the next phase, which is for more robust tooling, developer tooling, kind of one step above the smart contract challenge, that runs from June 3rd to June 30th. Um, both of these you can join at any time. Let's say you're swamped up until the 28th, and then you sign up and you bang out some crazy smart contracts in 24 hours and get them in by May 29th. That is acceptable. We know it's a crazy time right now with quarantine. Um, you might have a lot of free time. You might be super swamped. Um, and we would love to see you join at any time and try to throw together some contracts. So first phase is open now. It opened last Thursday. And we're using the Gitcoin platform uh, in their Hackathon Explorer to facilitate the hackathon. Um, you can win up to 1350 USD in prizes this, uh, this first phase because there are three levels of difficulty. The first level has a prize of $50. The second level has a prize of $100. And the third level has a prize of $200. Then there is a grand prize, and the best contract out of all of them will get a thousand buckaroos in USD. Which means, if you submit a contract to all three levels and you win the grand prize, you could win up to thirteen fifty. Um, so we're just trying to kick the tires, the Clarity programming language. Excited to get a bunch of devs in front of it, tinkering, um, breaking eggs, making omelets, and seeing uh, kind of pushing the limits of what it can do. So I'm going to run through the three levels really quick. Level zero is the basic smart contracts. You just got your hammer out. Um, like I said, $50 prizes at this level, and we're giving out five of them. And these are the lowest hanging fruit of the smart contract tree. These are going to be basic smart contracts, uh, rudimentary, demonstrating just a handful of clarity design principles. Um, you got an introductory understanding of the language. Uh, it's going to be pretty self-contained, a clarity tech demo of sorts. Very small number of methods, functions, variables, et cetera. Elementary testing, pretty basic commenting. Um, more of a Bob Ross painting than a Mona Lisa if you're an artist out there. Um, that counter tutorial that I showed you, that would be a good example of this level zero. You know, It was only 20 lines of code, but had some functional testing and did something, but was more just a tech demo. Level one, you're upgrading to a little toolbox there. Um, this is the intermediate level, $100 prizes at this level, and we're giving out seven of them. Um, this ain't your first rodeo, but you're no Steve Wozniak either. This is for proficient smart contract devs who want to build contracts that are showing off the principles of clarity. Um, one step above basic, but probably not ready to be implemented in a mass consumer application. Um, it'll show an expanded functional smart contract that's really taking advantage of some of the clarity design principles, not an exhaustive demonstration. Um, it's going to display that you have a decent competency with clarity, uh, super well commented code describing the major events and functions within the contract, thoughtful testing that verifies the functionality. Um, and I attached an escrow contract as a good example of this level. Um, escrow is a pretty common a uh, smart contract around the blockchain space. It's a contract that's taking money for X amount of parties and then distributing it based on a certain set of conditions. Uh, requires a decent amount of code, but certainly not a thousand lines. Level two, these are for the advanced smart contract developers. We've upgraded to a construction crane over there. $200 prizes up for grabs at this level. We're giving away 10 of them. Um, these are for devs that want to dive right in the deep end. Maybe you have tinkered with Solidity a little bit. Um, we're looking for powerful, robust, extensive smart contracts that really show off the full potential of the Clarity smart contracting language. Clean code, descriptive documentation, strict testing, the works. Um, these are going to be the super powerful, robust, fully fledged smart contracts, um, exhibits creative and novel use of the Clarity language. We want you to think outside the box. Super well designed, logically structured, real world applicability, um, comprehensive testing suite, all that good stuff, production grade application. Um, makes full use of the Clarity language reference. I put the reference there. That is the hyper technical page that just lists all of everything. So we really want to see you um, getting in there, messing around with Clarity. And I attach a non-fungible token uh, clarity example contract here. Um, super comprehensive contract. If you know about NFTs like CryptoKitties or digital assets, it requires a lot of methods deciding who is the owner, how to send it, 
um, when to mint it, uh, all sorts of functionality that needs to be implemented. So um, we were able to lock up Simon Cowell and Gordon Ramsay as your judges. Uh, wait, no, I'm just getting in. No, they had to drop. But uh, we have the second best judges, DeWalker and Aaron Blockstack. Um, they are going to be your judges. They're from our engineering team. Super intelligent engineers. Really excited to have them uh, tear into some of these submissions. Uh, the judging criteria, if you've done a hackathon before, might be par for the course. Design. Is it well-structured, broken into logical functions? Like I said, functionality, does it work? Use of clarity le reference, are you really digging into clarity? Uh, the whole point of this hackathon is to, is to rattle the cage on clarity and really see what it can do. Um, so we want to focus on fleshing out all the clarity reference there. Originality, creativity, this is going to be a difficult one because the, a lot of the building blocks of smart contracts are out there already in other smart contracting languages. So we want to see if you can think outside the box and come up with maybe a novel use case or novel contract that hasn't really been done before. Real world viability, would it be applicable to a real world DAP or um, an application right now? And then documentation and commenting. This is the really fun one that everyone loves. Um, we want a comprehensive documentation with it, really describing what the contract is doing and your experiencing with the your experience with developing it. Uh, maybe a README and also clean commented code throughout the entire smart contract. We want someone with no smart contract experience to be able to go through and read the comments and figure out what's going on in there. How to get involved. First and foremost, it is uh, hosted on the Gitcoin website. So that is the link to our hackathon listing on Gitcoin. Gitcoin is a really cool platform that uh, kind of does bounties for developers, but they've also um, spun up a hackathon war machine. They just crank out hackathons every single month. They have a crazy thriving developer base, bunch of passionate builders. So we're excited to get clarity in front of them. Um, also, we have the community.blockstack.org slash Clarity Hackathon. That's like our official homepage, and that's going to be your one-stop shop for Clarity resources and information and the knowledge base. Um, we've assembled all of like the internal first-party Blockstack resources, but also a lot of great external community-made resources um, on that site. Uh, a couple other uh, links there I'll brush over because we're running out of time. Blockstack Forum is great for longer form stuff. Contribute code on GitHub. Community.blockstack has uh, a lot of events or meetups. And like I said, $1,000 to the best overall contract. This is the Gitcoin platform. Give you a little crash course here. Uh, you can click on the link to the bottom left there uh, that says Clarity Hackathon by Blockstack to go straight to the hackathon or navigate there manually through the nav bar at the top by clicking products and then hackathons. Um, also, there's a weekly action on the right side there. Gitcoin has recently implemented this cool feature called Quests, which is kind of a Pokemon style learning tool. Um, with the Git Gitcoin Find Your Clarity Quest, you can read a little blog post on Clarity and then take a little quiz where you're bad battling another bot and win this limited edition Clarity Hackathon kudos. Gitcoin kudos are kind of badges that display on your profile that show your notoriety around the site. Um, and we're, we're really happy how this uh, Vaporwave Clarity Hackathon kudos turned out. This is what the Clarity Hackathon listing looks like. Um, everything is hosted on GitHub through GitHub issues, and it's populated on this prizes page. There are the three levels. If you're a beginner, click on level zero and start work. Starting work on Gitcoin means you're beginning work on the submission. Um, so you have to signal that you started work, and it'll let the um, the moderators, such as myself, know that you are participating. Um, the three levels are there. Click on whichever one you want to do. Uh, there's also a town square in chat, which is the Gitcoin native communication channels. Town Square is more of like a Facebook timeline. Chat's more of like Discord, asynchronous. Um, definitely pop in there to meet some new hackers and uh, just discuss projects. This is the Blockstack Discord. If I had to encourage you to go to one place, it would be the hashtag hackathons channel on the Blockstack Discord. Uh, Blockstack employees are hanging out there all the time. Our community power users are in there. Um, this is a great example of uh, one of our great community members, Freaker, uh, who I think Stefan mentioned, uh, helping out Harini from Block Survey. A lot of great collaborative help going on in there. So if you have a question, pop in. 
Also, one of our uh, engineers, Ludo, just had an AMA in there. So there's a lot of great questions to comment, answers to commonly asked questions in there right now. Flux Tech Forum, little screenshot there. Like I said, better for longer form posts that maybe you want people to uh, chew on for a day and come back with a, a more comprehensive answer. If you need any German speaking assistance, Alex Greib has volunteered. He uh, is based in Santa Barbara, California, but is German speaking. So if you didn't understand a word that I just said, feel free to contact him through his email there, alex at blockstack.com or over Twitter, um, or pop into the Discord and shoot him a DM. Um, I think I would just reiterate that if you are interested at all, need help with anything, pop in the Discord. I am a mentor for this hackathon. I'd be happy to help hold your hand, um, navigate you through the sign up or submission process. Uh, yeah, I think we're just really excited about getting a new smart contract language in front of eager devs and seeing what they built. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, blown away by some of the presentations here today. Really insightful stuff that I, I would not be exposed to normally. So. Um, Really happy about having this platform to share some stuff.